Eight years ago, Kiev announced what it called an anti-terror operation against its then easternmost regions of Donetsk and Lugansk, Ukraine's own regions. The reason? Their disobedience to Kiev's new rulers that came to power after the brutal events known as Euromaidan and the overthrow of the president. Traditionally having close ties with Russia, the area known as Donbass in eastern Ukraine accused Kiev's new authorities of Russophobia and refused to recognize them as a legitimate power. Anti-government protests raged in all major cities in the east. Kiev branded the regions separatists. When the anti-terror operation was declared, I was in Donetsk and for months later traveled all across Donbass. It was a full-scale operation with aviation, tanks, heavy artillery and thousands of boots on the ground involved. While it was supposed to target terrorists, innocent civilians, often elderly and kids, became victims of this bloody mission. The brutal military operation against its own people burned the bridges, literally and metaphorically, for any peaceful solution between Kiev and the country's east. The tragedy in the Black Sea port of Odessa became the final straw. For eight years, the slaughter of so many civilians in the Donbass has gone almost completely unnoticed by the international community. Since April 2014, the Ukrainian side has been shelling residential areas in the two self-proclaimed republics using heavy offensive weapons. At least 5,500 civilians have been injured. More than 2,600 civilians have been killed. More than 2,200 objects of civilian infrastructure were destroyed or damaged. For eight long years, Russia called time after time for a peaceful resolution to the conflict, but that plea to Kiev always fell on deaf ears. The Minsk agreements were killed long before yesterday's recognition of the People's Republics of Donbass, and not by us, not by the representatives of these republics, but by the current authorities in Kiev. Ukraine's current president vowed to finally end the war, but escalations continued and hatred also grew. The republics, backed into a corner, seemed to have little choice but ask their big neighbor for protection. But helping them, Russia is also securing its own borders and interests. Moscow says Ukraine's strongly anti-Russia policies and its alarmingly fast militarization posed a serious threat to Russia's own national security and it was determined to do something about it. Both the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine are a compulsory component of the agreements we seek. Fifty days on, both sides have lost many lives, both military and civilian, and seem to be close to losing hope for a quick and non-military solution. Uh, the aim was to fight the anti-Maidan movement, uh, which was in eastern Ukraine, south Ukraine. And, um, yeah, what was interesting uh, on the operation, on the beginning, on the 13th of April, is uh, that uh, when the Security Council of Ukraine made the decision to start this anti-terror operation, um, the CIA boss was at the table, which um, is officially um, recognized. And um, so the question is, who made the decision somehow, Ukraine or USA? From the point of view of, of anti-terror operation, this was a nice name uh, to cover that they started a war. I really don't want to call it anti-terror operation somehow because it was uh, you don't make anti-terror operation with, with the tanks and, and, and planes to, to bomb uh, cities. This was a war from the very beginning started by Kiev against the Donbass. After Maidan, no Ukrainian government was able to make any decision without the USA. 75% uh, of the civilian casualties um, are victims of the Ukrainian army. This is something West media doesn't want to show. But we know that the USA don't care about civilian victims. Look at Iraq. Um, uh, there are 600,000 to 1 million people died uh, on the operations of, of the USA. And after that, it's quite obvious that the USA wanted the war in eastern Ukraine. 
for one simple reason. Um, uh, from geopolitical interest, uh, the US, US wants to divide Ukraine from Russia. And what can divide two countries better than a civil war um, with ethnical Russians in the Donbass against the Ukrainian government or vice versa? 